Welcome back to Let's Play The Maw. I'm Burning Dog Face, and uh, I like to start off the second session of any Let's Play by showing you guys what happens when I load the game. Since you never know, I could be a million miles away from where we left off, or it could just be a start of the level kind of affair. You know, I've only just noticed the uh, that the walls are made up of matrix code. Hmm. But I'd also like to show off before I do that. I've learned that the uh, little pink guys are called yums. <laughs> In which case, I don't feel so bad about eating them because it kind of seems like they were asking for it. Uh, the achievements are pretty straightforward. You know, do all the things. Uh, do this X times at each of these powers. Oh, apparently the gross bugs are called snuffles. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, here they are some for the... I kind of gather that these are specific to the uh, DLC levels because the other achievements are just for the levels of the main game. Hmm. But then there's that one there. Play during Ma's six meal times. Breakfast, brunch, lunch, dunch, dinner, and midnight feast. I'm assuming that means times of day, but you never know. Oh, there is a uh, load level thing. Awesome. So I'll be able to go back to Brute Force at the end of the game and see if I uh, am, can find the stuff that I missed. Alright, so it looks like it does go back to the beginning of the level, but fortunately we've just gotten here. Huh? What are you... You can't eat the ground. Well, maybe you can, but you shouldn't. Uh... I'd also like to give a, a shout-out to Vincer's Prodigy. What was that? a very interesting comment on one of the videos in the first session. Whomever captured you and the Maw is unwilling or unable to use lethal force. Slavers would probably cut their losses and kill you so they could salvage some of that equipment. These guys are probably either space cops or bounty hunters. That being said, cause enough damage and they will still bomb you anyway. I thought that was very neat. Ooh, that guy's got a laser. The fat thing about. We've got snails to eat. That's right, it's a rock. Excellent. guy with the other guy, but that was not the uh, right way to do that. No? It just wouldn't let me throw it to the maw. I don't think it previously made that noise and I was too far away. I wonder if these are always if these grow in pairs in the same rock shelf, or if that's actually part of the same plant. <laughs> Science fiction has taught me anything. It's 
that it doesn't matter how ridiculous something is, you shouldn't discount it as a possibility. It's not a good sound. So this is the level that's supposed to introduce you to those guys, I guess. The Chargey Beetle. It's not the correct button. best of my knowledge, the uh, people who made this game have only done one sequel to one of their previous games, and that was uh, Ms. Splosion Man. I don't know if that was a conscious effort, like with uh, a developer known as The Behemoth, where... Uh, Every one of their games is, by conscious choice, uh, a totally different genre from the previous one, not just, uh, you know, unrelated in terms of story. I don't know if it's that, or if they just like to, you know, mess around and tell new stories. Hello. Wow, you're a bigot! Fuck, am I meant to get over there? Alright, I see some platforming bullshit over here. Maybe these guys will just let me pass. They did not. I can't begin to tell you how surprised I am. Oh. Kind of tingles. Are you sure you're stuck? No, I guess it's on that thing, so fine. So it's not a laser, it's just energy. It doesn't even burn. Okay, you keep him company and try not to eat the planet while I'm away. I have some weird platforming nonsense to go through. really seems to be a color coding thing. You just can't walk on anything slanted and brown. This one's fine, because it's horizontal. Ooh. Closer than I would have liked. Okay, I'm up here now. I guess I have to walk around this side. In order to get up. I don't even know if this will work. Heaven be praised, I made it up a brown incline. What will they think of next? Aw, oh, shite. How am I meant to get that back to there? Okay, so I can feed you to the maw and get fire powers. I feel like I need to throw this into those. The, uh, the, 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 the things locking the giant beetle to the ground, whatever they're called. Restraints, that's the word I was trying to think of. But I don't know why I would want to be fire. And I don't know how to get that all the way over there, because... Yeah, you can hear it doing that thing. Oh, it's chasing me. No, no, yeah, it does. Okay. I just wanted to know. It didn't even kill me. Hmm. Hmm. 
don't think I've seen a single yum in this uh, level. Hate. Which channel am I meant to get to that guy? I definitely can't jump to that kind of a gap. Thanks, Frank. Really appreciate that. problem with the beetle, but we'll see. See if we can just burn those things. little clearing. I thought he was going to burn all the flowers, too. Achievement unlocked. Time for barbecue. With the gastro power, flame at least 150 objects and or creatures. supposed to be popping out by now. I don't actually remember if any of them ever popped out of these purple things, but... It's a very good thing that I'm fireproof. I mean, I've said that before, but, you know... Randomly burning things makes me feel bad. No, you don't like eat the fire and grow more powerful. No dudes over here. 
summon these not pine trees, though. That was very efficient. That was not. You didn't hit anything. Uh, X button. Hello. Not that time. I wonder how many times... Oh, you know, I've just realized that it doesn't have the, uh, the great big beetle up there. Oh, okay, so we do need to get through there. Feeling, feeding, uh... Oh! That was easier than usual. <laughs> Already feeding a bunch of, you know, random living creatures minding their own business directly into the mouth of this purple alien thing. You know, I knew that's what the game is about. We're not going in. This kind of feels like arson right here. <laughs> I do enjoy that uh, Frank is all wide-eyed and grinning. Like this is a very wholesome experience for him. Still five more dudes. There's the end of the level. Which means there are... Hmm. I can see trees around, but I'm pretty much certain we can't get to those places. I guess there's a couple of flowers I didn't burn, but... For a moment there, I misplaced them all. Maybe I'll get really lucky, and each of these will have something in them. Damn it. I 
wonder if this is going to be one of those things where I scour the entire level looking, and then it turns out there's a, it actually goes further than I thought, and there's like a batch of trees around the corner. Can't go in there. Some trees just there I thought I could get to. I wonder if I was meant to, like, grapple those rocks up there. It's actually not that tricky to get over here. He said dooming himself. I always enjoy in science fiction when an alien species is casually fireproof or something. I thought I was finding a secret cave or something for a second there. I'm fairly confident that the number of times I have the number of times I have, uh, actually found something hidden in a waterfall is much lower than the amount of times I have checked waterfalls, but keep the dream alive. No, I cannot grapple here at all. Okay. Let's check out those trees I found. Let me call it an episode. the story when I was a kid. I think it was about salvagers in space who go to various planets and recover crashed spaceships. I don't know, the thing, the part I remember clearly was this one section where they go to a planet where the temperature is so low that oxygen collects in liquid form. So all the natural life forms, or all the animal life forms, are adapted to the temperature being, you know, minus a jillion degrees Celsius. And, uh... They breathe by, uh, occasionally stopping at one of these pools of oxygen and, uh, drinking some up. Specialized anatomy, so you only need to do it about once a day. And, uh... it up because there's a bit where uh, one of the spacemen is out in his suit and he gets attacked by the local equivalent of a mountain lion. It's this big animal that wants to do him harm. And the reason I remember this story at all, the reason that it's stuck in my head for all these years is because I thought it was really neat that he manages to get this beast off of him by uh, opening the faceplate of his helmet and breathing out really, really hard. Because this thing is used to living at, like, you know, negative a million degrees Celsius or whatever insane number they made up. And, uh... 
So this guy breathing out at, you know, slightly above room temperature in its face is the equivalent of holding a blowtorch in one of uh, your or my face. Faces? Faces. That wasn't a great sentence to the best of times, but, you know. Just reminded by Frank here being casually immune to fire. Maybe open the refrigerator door and he... Passes out from uh, the cold. Yeah. It wasn't a very good idea, by the way. The guy got frostbite on his face for uh, opening his uh, visor, but it kept him alive. And frostbite can be treated. Anyway, that rambling story out of the way, and all of the uh, critters eaten. I'll just call it. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you on the next episode of Let's Play The Mob. <laughs> we lead our growing friend to the end of the level and find out what lies next. <laughs> Later.